I'm having a day out at the zoo. What could be better? And I'm looking for the leader of the animal kingdom. There he is, the boss, Jock, the 32 stone silverback. But what is it that makes for good leadership in the animal kingdom? And is it the same for us humans? Right, everyone. I would like you to build one of these. <gasps> oh. You can either do it by yourself or in a team. It's completely up to you. Go, 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 go. So this is really interesting. There are two rockets between the three girls. And there's one of the girls, Aisha, she's jumping between the two rockets. So she's helping the two individual rocket builders. And over here, all the boys are working together, which is a bit of a surprise because they're three strong characters, but they're all coming together to help design their rocket. Five, four, three, two, one. This is Jennifer Cook. Supported by AXA, Jen is looking at how our personality types affect the way that we learn, make decisions and ultimately lead. So Jen, what are we up to today? Well, today we're doing a complex team building exercise, which will tell us lots about the different ways in which people lead and learn. OK, let's do it. OK, Team Brill, Team Smuggler, your task today is to build a self-propelled rocket. You have your team kits with all the information that you need. It has to look good and fly good. OK, guys, off you go. So what's your research finding, Jen? We're finding that there are two main types of leader, aggressively dominant people, who tend to learn primarily from their own personal experience, mm -hmm. not from people around them. Right. But then on the other hand, we have socially dominant people who tend to learn from information that comes from observing or listening to other people. Any idea what I am? We could ask you to do an online test mm -hmm. and look at your responses. Or we could also put you into a brain scanner and look at your brain activity and this will give us some idea of what sort of learner you are. Let's do that. That sounds fun. OK, so on the screen you're going to see a blue shape and a green shape and you have to choose the one that you feel is correct. OK. You'll also see an orange box which represents the choice that other people have previously made and you can use this to help you make your choice. Right, let's do this. So Jen, how did I do? What am I? Am I socially dominant, individually dominant? What am I? Well, what you can see here is that typically different parts of the brain are active when you're learning from social advice compared to when you're focusing on your own experience. Okay. But I need a little bit more time to analyse your response data before I can figure out what type of learner you are. All right, just get to wait, aren't I? So the big question is, how do we actually use this knowledge? Well, understanding how different people learn has important implications for all sorts of environments, from the classroom to the boardroom. For example, in a group of people like this, we have social learners and we have individual learners. But the individual learners might benefit more from a more personal activity, for example, an online learning task. And how does that apply to being a good leader? Well, we typically assume that our leaders are aggressively dominant people that ignore what we tell them and just do what they want to do. But our research suggests that many leaders are actually socially dominant people who are really good at using information from other people. And that's just what we've seen in the animal kingdom, like the gorilla you met in the zoo, for example. OK, I think it's time for launch. Come on, guys, let's do this. So if we know how people learn, we can adapt our classrooms and our offices to bring out the best in everyone. Jen has sent me my results. Am I socially dominant or aggressively dominant? Socially dominant, that's good. That means I'm channeling my inner silverback gorilla and it means I learn from others. Please with that.